What's up everybody, it's Man of Low Moral Fiber here. My name's Luke, and in this video we're going to be taking another look at The Infection as a part of my Does It Suck series. The Infection is a Serif Rarity Malawan pistol that is only available in Corrosive Element. This weapon can be found in the third campaign DLC, Sir Hammerlock's Big Game Hunt, where it is available for purchase from the Serif vendor in the Hunter's Grotto. Like many other weapons, it did receive a significant buff as a part of the community patch, which is why we'll be taking another look at it. We're going to start here by looking at the weapon without the patch applied, and then move on to applying the patch to see how the weapon has changed. If we look at this particular variant of the infection, we can see that it has the Malawan grip because it lacks a trigger guard. And with the Malawan grip and the potent prefix, which comes from the base damage accessory, we can see that at overpower level 8, it seems to have a really low damage for a Malawan pistol, being only about 103,000. If we compare that to a normally built Malawan pistol that is of the non-unique variety, I believe this is pronounced Aegis, I could be wrong on that. We can see that the damage on the infection is less than a quarter of that of the damage of the normal purple pistol. The accuracy is about the same, the fire rate is the same, and the reload speed is pretty comparable with the infection taking a little bit longer, but the infection does have a slightly larger magazine as well. When we get to the corrosion damage, we can see that the infection has double the corrosion damage that the Aegis has, and it's also got a much higher chance to corrode at over three times higher. So when we fire this weapon, we can see that it's going to have a lower base damage than a normal Malawan pistol, but the damage over time should be much higher. Now at overpower level 8, damage over time is generally thought of as weak, and without the community patch when I tested this weapon before, I did say that it sucked because compared to pretty much any normal Malawan pistol, or most pistols in general, you're going to get better performance with a, you know, non-unique version here, basically. So let's go ahead and test out how it performs. I am going to be using the Blurred Trickster build, which will give us a significant boost to fire rate and the chain reaction skill. When we have enemies in phase lock, they will be grouped up with Converge, and then we will use Chain Reaction to bounce, bounce around a lot of infection bullets and hopefully spread that corrosive damage over time pretty quickly. We'll be using both Scorn and Ruin to slag these enemies as frequently as we can to hopefully get the best amount of performance out of the corrosive damage over time. Corrosive damage over time and damage over time in general received a huge boost as a part of the community patch, which is why I expect this weapon to perform much more admirably after we apply the patch. We're going to start here with this guy, though. Um, I expect us not to have a great time killing him. You can see, though, that the uh, corrosive damage over time in combination with cloud kill is actually working through him. And once he got slagged from my antagonist, he died pretty quickly. So this weapon is slightly better now because it does slack, uh, stack with Cloud Kill, and Cloud Kill did receive a buff straight from Gearbox, and it's actually pretty powerful now, whereas before, it was very weak. So let's see how this weapon performs when we group enemies up with Converge and stuff. I expect the chain reaction to bounce around the corrosive damage over time and actually kill those enemies for us. Let's group a couple more of these enemies up here and, uh, you know, perhaps slag this Exploder and see if he'll die before he gets to us. So with this weapon, I expect that we will not be able to uh, group exploders up or disable exploders very easily because the damage that we're doing to their critical hit spots will be so low that they probably will not blow up for us. But with that in mind, um, we may be able to kill them before they get here so long as we get them slagged and somehow apply enough corrosive damage over time to kill them. Kill this hot loader there with our damage over time so that he can't apply a damage over time to us. So pretty impressive there. Um, part of the reason these enemies are dying, though, is indeed Cloud Kill. So this is the Pimpernel, and you can see that Cloud Kill alone is beating out his health regeneration in some cases. So that's kind of how that works, but no biggie. I would love for the Hot Loader to come closer to us here so that we could um, end up phase locking him and then still spreading the corrosive damage over time to the other enemy there. That was my hope. You can see that I was only aiming at the phase locked enemy, and we did catch some corrosive bullets over here on this guy. So the Trickster Calm is working okay. Perhaps a Witch Calm would work even better because the Witch Calm would boost corrosive damage and, um, you know, corrosive damage chance. 
but the witch calm doesn't really provide any good skill build uh, or skill boost for us. And so I think the chain reaction boost with the passive boost to fire rate on the blurred trickster is going to help us out a little bit more. Could be wrong on that. Perhaps it would be better to use a witch calm, but the witch calm just doesn't boost very many good skills. And because of that is often overlooked. Let's take a look at how quickly we can deal with this super badass loader. I think that DOT weapons are going to be a little bit less effective on enemies with massive pools of health, but you can see that we still took him out pretty quickly there before he was able even to really get shots off on us. So maybe this weapon's not as sucky as I originally claimed it was, but I would still say without the community patch we would be much better off using a regular non-elemental Malawan pistol. It would simply deal more damage quicker because it has more damage actually with the pellet and we're waiting you know less time for that damage to actually apply and counting less on the damage over time which does as the name would imply take time to apply that damage so let's go ahead apply the community patch and see how the weapon has changed the patch notes for the infection say that they boosted its damage by 200 percent and increased the damage over time by 30 percent so that would be pretty huge. Let's take a look at how that happens here real quick. Like I said, we've got about 103k on the card here and about 381k as far as our corrosive damage. So let's go ahead and quit out here. We'll apply the patch and then see how the weapon has changed and if it's improved now. I would expect that it does better. I did look at the patch notes and I saw that the witch calm was unadjusted. So again, that's why I'm not using the witch calm. We can see now that it's doing 284k or thereabouts as far as the damage on the initial shot. And so that's huge there. And then the corrosive damage was also boosted to 423k as well. So that's pretty huge there. Even though the Gemstone Aegis did get a huge boost as far as its damage because it went upper rarity. I say huge boost. It got a solid boost as far as its damage. But you can see that the infection is now a lot closer to its damage. Um, being over half, whereas before it was about a quarter, I believe. So that's pretty cool there. And we'll see how it does here in the Washburn Refinery. And keep in mind that at overpower levels in the community patch, damage over time got a 50% boost, if I recall correctly. So that should be pretty huge for us. Let's see how we're doing against this guy now that, uh, you know, <laughs> we have extra damage over time and stuff. So... He's taking some damage. I'll try to uh, actually hit critical hits with it so that we can take advantage of the boosted pistol damage or the boosted traditional damage on this weapon. And now let's take a look at how it's going to perform once we group a few of these enemies up and try to spread the corrosive damage over time around using chain reaction. So this power loader, he should die as he's walking towards us here. Now, one thing that you do have to keep in mind with the infection and probably especially now that it's been buffed and had its damage over time buffed, is you do not want to shoot this weapon at power loaders or bull loaders when they are capable of reflecting it at you. Because if you get this damage over time reflected at you, you are likely going to die. Um, it is almost unavoidable if you catch damage over time on yourself with this weapon, which I have managed to do in the past, and so that's something that you definitely want to watch out for. Regardless, this weapon seems to be performing pretty damn well here. I want to get this guy slagged. See if we're able to take him out before he gets to us. So I think we can actually knock him over now because we're actually dealing enough damage to their critical hit spots. And so that's pretty cool. Um, the weapon is significantly better at taking out, you know, charging exploders, which is a very, very good thing. It's something that you need to happen quite often in Borderlands 2. And so it's nice that this weapon can do it. I was just waiting for the damage over time to finish off that guy. The damage over time is... Very potent now. Um, one thing that you can definitely do with this weapon is apply DOT and switch to a Malawan weapon if you need to because it's going to be able to um, heal you back up, I would imagine. Now, one thing that I will say is that just the Pimpernel and Cloud Kill is able to kill some of these Exploders. So maybe it's not a huge deal if the weapon is not the best at taking out Exploders on Maya because it seems like just slagging and using Cloud Kill is enough to kill an Exploder these days. Regardless, let's see if we get better damage now on this guy down here. So he should be slagged for us. Perfect. And we'll shoot at him more. I chose not to use the double variant of this weapon just because I think we can only get one DOT stack at a time. And hitting him with two pellets at once that deal less damage and are less likely to hit a critical hit seems less efficient than, to me than 
hitting critical hits with this weapon and actually getting, you know, good damage. That's just what I felt anyway. Now, like I said, down here, these power loaders will be able to take you out very, very quickly if you're not careful. Um, perhaps I can show that to you. If I can get one of them to spin their arms, we might be able to kill ourselves here. Or, nope, the damage over time will just take him out instead. I promise, though, <laughs> if you shoot a power loader directly in the spinning arms and it comes right back at you with this weapon, it will kill you. Cool. So, we'll uh, group these guys up and see if we're able to finish them off as well. Perfect. So this weapon no longer sucks. Um, I was perhaps a little bit too critical of the weapon beforehand, um, but it did suck compared to a lot of other alternatives. Now, this weapon is perhaps a little bit delayed in its damage, but its damage is undeniably good. There's no doubt about that. This is a potent weapon that I'd say is definitely working. I'm gonna try to pull this guy out of here, see if he can come down here for us. Perfect, little bastard, kill him too. All right. So we've got some enemies over here. We'll go ahead, get them all slagged, group them up a little bit. And that should be the end of that one. Whoops, perhaps the uh, Pimpernel, Cloud Kill, and Quasar are too strong by themselves. Whatever. You can see, though, that damage over time is wrecking these enemies. Let's go ahead and get this guy slagged. Obviously, he's going to take some Cloud Kill damage, but once we apply the infection damage to him as well, he's going to tick down even a little bit quicker. So... Pretty impressive stuff there. Maybe you can get multiple stacks on enemies at once. Maybe we should be using the binary version. I'm not entirely certain. It does seem like I would rather use the potent version just because it's so much more accurate, though. That's just the way I prefer it. If you have better luck with the binary version, definitely feel free to try it out that way. All right, so we've got an enemy here at long range. Let's see if we can just apply enough corrosive damage over time to wear him out. So will that finish him off? Jeez, that's pretty crazy. Um, one thing that is true with this weapon is that you do not have to be as precise as you might have to be with other pistols for them to reach a you know high efficiency. Because with this weapon, I would you know say that even though its base damage has been boosted significantly, its damage potential is still highest with the damage over time. And so with that in mind, um, you can. You know, kill enemies at a really far distance away because all you're trying to do is basically paint them green, right? And if you do that, you don't necessarily have to even be where they can hit you sometimes. Like, this guy literally can't shoot us right now because these barrels were blocking him. And he just got ate up by that stinky damage there. So that's pretty cool. There are a bunch of enemies over here. I'm going to try to group them all up. Hopefully they all get slagged for me. Well, they all died because of cloud kill <laughs> perhaps we should have specked out a cloud kill i don't know cloud kill is almost too strong now it's crazy right cloud kill was effectively thought of as a useless skill for a long time for the most part and now it's relatively powerful there's no doubt about it all right so a couple enemies over here let's see if we can't uh, group them up apply some corrosive damage over time to that guy Put this guy in the air. Excellent. So we are getting corrosive damage over here on this hot loader. We'll finish him off as well. Awesome. This R loader is not slagged, so that was unfortunate for us there. But you can see once we get that uh, infection on him a little bit, he starts dying pretty quickly. Seems like there may be a hot loader over there as well. I hope that he's slagged. We'll throw that scorn out there just to try to make sure. Excellent. So now there's no more hot loader there. So that enemy's way up there, and uh, looks like Cloud Killer Pimpernel was enough to deal with him. That's unfortunate. All right, deal with this guy too. He'll die, I think. Nice. One thing I have noticed with this weapon is that you can count on it killing enemies even if you don't sit there and watch them die, which is kind of cool. Wow, that guy came all the way over here. I guess it was just all of the commotion from the phase lock and the quasars that piqued his interest. I'm not entirely certain. Let's go see Pervy and all his buddies real quick, and then we'll see how this weapon does against Turley as well. Obviously, only being available in Corrosive Element, it's going to be tougher to take out Hurley's shield than it normally is, but shouldn't be too big of a deal. wanted to see if uh, Pervy would get pulled over there, but he didn't seem to get pulled over there, so that's kind of a bummer. No worries. I guess this weapon also pairs very well with uh, Maya's life tap skill because um, 
you know, you get health back with it pretty quickly. So that's kind of cool. Spread the corrosive dot around between these two guys. We'll slag that one over there and also apply some corrosive damage to it. Perfect. It did actually get slagged by Scorn, which is always nice. It seems that Scorn is definitely one of the weaker game changers in the game. It looks awesome, but it doesn't slag at, you know, anywhere near as efficiently as you think it would. Anywho, let's move forward. We still have Hurley to take out and one more guy over here because I think we took out the um, extra last loader as well. So that's pretty cool. Blow up some of these barrels just so that we don't get screwed by them. And then we'll apply the patch here in just a second. I think there's a barrel over there. I must not be shooting in the right spot. There we go. All right. There's a barrel right here as well. So we got one badass up there. This is perhaps a good usage case scenario for it because we can shoot him from so far away. All right. Makes it hard for him to hit us, but the corrosive damage over time doesn't really care how far away from him you are. And so it's going to finish him off for you. That's pretty cool. Speaking of an enemy that's really far away, let's go ahead and shoot this guy a few times as well. So I don't want to waste my... Uh, phase lock on him, but I realized I can't phase lock Hurley, so not a huge deal there. We'll just use phase lock as an extra slagging tool for him. Now his shield should be difficult to take out with corrosive damage over time as our primary damage source, but let's see if it's enough corrosive damage over time to wear him thin. So with this weapon, you know, I'm just going to fire out some shots here and it's going to slowly start ticking away at him. Keep him slagged here. Now we'll kind of wait for his machine gun blast to take a time out. And then you can see that our corrosive damage is still ticking. So even though we are hiding behind here and he can't hit us, we're still hitting him. And so this is one of the things that the infection is good at. If the infection uh, could come in a bunch of different elements and had different names, right, that would be something it would be really good at, especially with uh, an enemy like this with a shield. You could, you know, just apply some lingering shock damage to him, wait just a few minutes, or not minutes, but wait just a few moments and then go hit him again. So that should keep him slagged for us and we'll continue to try to hit, you know, some good corrosive damage over time on him. Now that his shield is actually down, he should start ticking down a lot quicker. In fact, I would expect us to be able to disable one of his arms here. I'll try that in just a second once he starts firing. Or stops firing. Well, maybe we still can't take out his arm very easily with this weapon because the damage is a little bit lower than that of a normal gun, but you can see that the corrosive damage over time is eating through his relatively deep health pool pretty quickly. And again, this is another situation where he can't really shoot us, despite his weird elevator technique. This is a high-level Hurley technique there, quite literally. Um, still killed him, so that's good stuff. We've got the Captain Blade's Midnight Star as a drop there. That's pretty cool. Oh, speaking of, there was another grenade that tried to kill us right there. Ah, interesting. <laughs> There's going to be one more enemy up here for us. Um, let's see how it does against him. Looks like the infection's plenty strong enough to kill a barrel, which is a good thing. And so that's the end of him. Overall, I would say the infection definitely does not suck now. Is it as strong as some of the highest tier pistols in the game? Maybe, but it's slower. You know what I mean? Like this weapon is definitely very efficient now that damage over time has received a boost, its damage over time has received a boost, and its you know base damage has been increased significantly. This weapon went from very, very poor to quite potent, but this weapon is a little bit slower to act than a lot of other weapons are that apply their damage quicker because this weapon is relying on damage over time for a significant portion of its potential DPS. With that in mind, it's not going to kill as quickly as some enemies will, or some weapons will kill enemies, but it will eliminate enemies in a way that can perhaps provide you more safety, it can allow you to use cover a little bit more efficiently, and 
The weapon can definitely help out in health gating scenarios where you need a source of damage in order to get some health back as well because the lingering damage lasts forever. I think this weapon would be a lot cooler if it also came in shock and fire element and it had different names. I don't know what you would name them, but I'm sure that the creative minds at Gearbox could have come up with some cool names, kind of like the infection. I don't know what they could have called um, the fire one. Maybe they could have called it the second degree or third degree. I don't know, you know, kind of like a crazy burn or something. And then the shock one, they'd have to give a name as well. Regardless, this weapon would be very useful if it also came in fire and shock with it only coming in corrosive. Um, the damage over time is still really, really nice, but one of my preferred ways to take out, um, a lot of loaders and stuff is by disabling their arms. And so this isn't the best weapon for disabling their arms. And so against enemies like rocket loaders and enemies that happen to spawn with incredibly dangerous weapons, you'll likely want to use a different weapon that can get the kill a little bit quicker than the infection does. Even if the infection kills in the same amount of trigger pulls, it's going to take a little bit longer just because you do need to wait on the damage over time. That said, it does allow you to kill enemies from a lot further range than your average pistol would. Overall, it definitely doesn't suck now. I would probably put this in the high tier, but not, not a top tier pistol. As always, guys, I thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. If you haven't yet taken the time to subscribe, please do so. I'd appreciate that as well. Otherwise, I do hope to catch you next time. Bye, guys.